Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's reading of scenes from Hillary and Clinton. Please place your Zoom in speaker view when the show begins. Please leave your mic muted and your video off. This is a coin <laughs> and it has a president on one side and I don't know what on the other. Now, if I were to take this coin and flip it, say five times, I might get something like heads, 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 tails, heads, right? And I think we can all agree if I were to flip it another five times, it would be pretty unlikely that I would get that same exact heads, 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 tails, heads. But if I were to flip it a hundred times, then sure, I would probably get that same order of flips once, maybe even twice. But if I were to flip this coin an infinite number of times, well, then I'd get that same sequence over and over and over again. So what people can take from this is that if the universe is infinite, and some people say that it is, then that means that everything that happens in it happens many times, over and over. And that, that means that there are an infinite number of planet Earths, all kinds of planet Earths. Planet Earths like this one, and planet Earths that are nothing like this one, and planet Earths that are like this one, but slightly different, and on and on and on. So then imagine, okay, that light years away from here, on one of those other planet Earths that's like this one, but slightly different, that there's a woman named Hillary. And this woman, Hillary, is trying to become president of a country called the United States of America. And Hillary, she had a husband named Bill. And Bill was himself once president. And imagine it's Sunday, and the month is January, and the year is 2008 on this other planet Earth. And this is supposed to be a hotel room. Now imagine that I'm that woman named Hillary who lives far away from here and who is trying to become president of the United States. And, and I've been campaigning for close to a year now. I haven't slept. I'm tired. I'm very tired. I have a long day ahead of me events and speeches and the state of New Hampshire will vote on Tuesday in something called a primary. Okay, Mark. <clears throat> I pick up the phone. I dial a number. Bill? Yeah. Come to New Hampshire. Okay. Twelve hours later, my husband arrives. It's night. It's late. It's quiet. It's very cold. Hello, Bill. Come on in. Is this where we stayed back in 92? I don't think so. Looks real familiar. The lobby, uh, this room, that, uh, oh, that view. Yeah. I, I don't think this place even existed in 92. Pretty sure this is where we stayed. Strange being back here. You don't look like you've been eating well. I haven't been eating much. You should eat. I forget to eat. <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, I know. You've been busy? Mm. -hmm. You said you forget to eat. Are you getting out of the house much? Mm. -hmm. What have you been up to? Or should I not ask? Yeah. If I shouldn't ask, I, I won't. I don't want to know what I don't want to know. It's nothing, Hill. It's nothing. Okay. All right. I'm uh, trying to write another book. I have three pages, working on a fourth. Yeah, well, how are you? I'm good, Bill. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm running for president. <laughs> yeah, you are. I was surprised you called me. I, I, I didn't expect, I, 
I didn't expect me, you to ask me to come out here. I wanted to see you. You didn't want to see me before. Why do you want to see me now? Some time has passed. You and told me to go home. You said that you didn't want me around. And at the time, I didn't want you around. You, you sort of kicked me out. You, you know, you sort of... And so there I was, spending Christmas alone. Our kid off with her boyfriend's family, and uh, you were off with your mother. Could have spent Christmas with either of us. The boyfriend's parents don't like me. <laughs> they like you enough to put up with you for one day. And your mother is always looking at me like uh, she's judging me, and I don't need that crap. So I just stayed home, made a turkey loaf, instant mashed potatoes, smoked a cigar, watched some TV, played with the dog. Well, you're here now. Yeah. Can I, can I touch you? It, it, it's been so long. All right. I missed you. I missed you too, Bill. I'm not very good by myself. I know. I don't like being alone. I know. I miss this. You miss this? I do. Um. I don't see you enough. I know. I know. So, do you like being out here doing this, doing the campaigning and... I do. Well, that's good. It could be a real slug if you don't, a real pain in the... <laughs> I, you know, I find it a relief in a way. It's, it's very exciting, very satisfying. That's good. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But I'd rather be busy than not. I'm, I'm happiest when I'm busy. Yeah, I know what you mean. Not without its stressful moments oh There's sure so much to keep track of and everything's always changing and then there are the worries the, the occasional the, the frequent but but no no it's 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 good it's it's good uh going out talking to people seeing different parts of the country the staff and mark mark is doing a good job so what are you worried about what's that you said you were worried i did, yes. Uh, well, <clears throat> since you ask, numbers. Mm. Money. Money. As in, we're out of money. The entire campaign is... If I don't get this state, we're not going to make it. Okay. So, money is one of the things I'm worried about. How much? What? Money. Do I need... Yeah. A lot. Roughly? Take the number you think I need. Mm-hmm. Now triple it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So... That's an awful lot of money. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what to do. Well... Look, what, what can I say? It, it just didn't work out. Call it a day. Come home. Come home? Come home. I, I don't want to come home. I'm not ready to come home. Not yet. Bill, come home? Really? It's not working out. Oh, sure. Maybe this state and the next state, but, but next month, start of next month, all those states we have next month, my numbers in those states are really great. I just don't have that kind of money. Don't tell me that you don't have a way of moving money around. Don't tell me that you don't get some money for all those trips around the world, consultation fees for your charity work, that, that you can't find a way to move from you to me. Things will turn around. After a month of being the loser, ugh, being the loser that everyone thought was going to be the winner, when you start to lose, you pull out. Pull out fast, don't linger. People linger. 
people get up there, they lose, they die. Then they rot, they rot in public. Don't let them see you rot. Don't let them see you become a, a rotting corpse stinking up the place. They see you like that. That's how they'll remember you forever. I'm going back home. You're, you're being very- I'm offended. Are you? You just wanted money, that's all. That's why you called me. You wanted me to get you money to use my ties, my resources, my, to fund your campaign. And, and is that such an outrageous thing to ask for after all the years that I stood next to you? After all the years that I waited for my chance to step out of your spotlight? All right. Um, but Bill, don't you walk out of here. Don't you dare. You threw me out. You got rid of me. You said, Bill, go home. You said, Bill, we don't need you. You said, Bill, this is my campaign. It is my campaign. I know, and, and so I left. I left because you asked me to. I left because you acted like I was a, a turd, like I was a disease, like I, you acted like I was going to sabotage your campaign. I, I didn't think you were going to sabotage the campaign. Then why did you say I was going to sabotage the campaign? Send a memo to Mark, hmm? A memo that Mark then passed around to everyone? A memo that said- now, I, I doubt I use the word sabotage. I don't like being treated like shit. I have not treated you like shit. What I'm better than shit. I'm gold. I'm golden. Yes, yes. You're golden. People like me. We all know people like you, but what I'm doing here is not about you. I wasn't going to make your thing about me. <laughs> you can't help but make my thing about you. When have I ever made my thing about you? I, is that a real question? Give me more credit then. Well, every, even when you talk about me, somehow it becomes about you. Why? Because I'm good at it? Because I'm good at talking and talking about you? That makes it about me? <laughs> No, I, I, that, I don't think that's what I'm saying. You are missing an opportunity here to take the thing that I do well and use it to your advantage. When I ran, I won. Oh, going there, are we? All I mean is, what I'm saying you, is... You know, if you were running today, you wouldn't win. Especially against him. You wouldn't have a chance. He is me. This Barack fella, all the things he says out there um, are the exact thing, same things that I said when I ran 16 years ago. And here everyone is acting like it's something new. Like it's something that no one before him has ever said. Like, like I've been erased. Like I've never existed. <sighs> I'm sorry, but do you know what it's like to have yourself taken away from yourself and given to someone else? It sucks. It it, it, again, we're back to you. No, all, all I mean is I, I'm... He called. Who? Him. The new you. Barack called. He called with a deal. Told Mark if I dropped out now, a, a gradual dropout, he would guarantee me running mate. <sighs> that got your attention. And you're telling me this because... I'm strongly considering his offer. No. <laughs> Oh, no, you are. You're not. If I can't get the money to continue on, what alternative do I have? No way am I packing up and going home. Caving is worse than packing up and going home. It's public humiliation. Of you or me? You're senior to him. He should be the one begging you to be your running, being begging to be your running mate, not the other way around. No. I'm losing, Bill. I'm losing really bad. God, I was supposed to be number one. Easy. Everyone, everyone expected it. Number one. And right out of the gate, not only did I not win, I didn't even come in second. I got a bad start. And the bad start isn't going away. New Hampshire is as bad as Iowa. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll find you the way to I'll find a way to get you the money you need to make it for the rest of the month. 
Thank you. But I'm only giving it to you on two conditions. What condition? Conditions. Condition number one. Let me join you on the trail. Uh, I, I don't. Hear me out. Mark doesn't call the shots anymore. <laughs> he doesn't call the shots now. I know how Mark runs things, and you're doing things how Mark does things. So condition number two is that Mark is out, and you do what I say, I'll run things. So, do we have a deal? I don't like there being conditions. Ah, the conditions are the best part. They're worth more than the money you're asking for. You're, you're bored. Yeah, and if I am? My campaign is not a cure for your boredom. <laughs> you're chalking up all your troubles up to the money. But the money is, is not the problem. You're only making it about the money so you don't have to make it about the... The real problem, which is... Wh what? What? Mark? No. You. <laughs> you and your opponent, in terms of uh, ideas, policy, platform, they're all basically the same. Oh, no, we aren't. Basically the same. So what it comes down to is personality. I, I have no interest in playing this as some sort of likability contest. Ah. <laughs> Obviously. Look, I, I see what you're doing when you're out there. I watch you when you're home on the TV and you are so weird and, and wooden and stiff. And, and let's be honest, you don't even like being around people all that much. Of course I do. Not people you don't know. Not the random people you have to walk up to and shake hands with and have a little bit of small talk and chit chat with. It's draining. Yeah, because you hate it. No, because I really am listening. Because when I talk to someone, I'm working very hard to hear and to understand and to think about what they're saying. I like to think these encounters matter more than... Than what I do? Just because I... It's harder work for me than it was for you doesn't mean I'd be a bad president. Hell, I think it means I'd be a very good president. Sure, sure, sure. But it also means there's no way you're going to get elected. And if you're not elected, you're not any kind of president. I refuse to believe that people... Oh, believe what you want doesn't change reality. People don't vote with their brains. They don't. Even people who think they vote with their brains don't. It's never not emotional. Oh, feelings are a terrible reason for doing anything. God, there's too much doing because of feelings. Yeah, but your problem is people don't think you have any. The case I'm making for myself. Yeah? The story I'm telling is that I am prepared, that I have it together better than anyone has ever had it together, that I am experienced. That's a shitty story. Better to let it all hang out, be a broken mess when you're a mess, and show parts of yourself that you're ashamed to show. Like what, Bill? Like the part of you that, when I walked in here tonight, that wanted to take care of me. I'm not here to take care of you. Make sure I was eating well and pet me on the head. I didn't pat you on the head. That's what they want. That's what you want. But I am a very representative of the general people. That's why I'm so good at this. I'm not interested in playing to the lowest common denominator. I think I'm better than that. Yes, yes, you're better than everyone. And you act like it all the time. And it makes people feel like shit. People don't like people who make them feel like shit. How about if people grow the fuck up? How about if you stop being so cold and <clears throat> stubborn and guarded? No, I, I know this version of you all too well. And if this, is, if this version of you does to everyone else what it does to me, you're just going to push people away. Oh, is that right? Is, is that how it works? In my experience. Your experience. 
yeah. your experience. Well, maybe that is how it works in your experience, but that is not how it works in my experience. <laughs> my experience with that sort of thing, I'm sorry to say, has been very different. My experience is that it's, it's best to kind of sort of keep some stuff to myself because when I have let some of that stuff out, it's not gone so well. Didn't go so well. In fact, when you and I were last here in New Hampshire about, you know, 16 years ago, that time you seem to be so nostalgic for, I, I have no idea why. I sure as hell am not nostalgic for it. I'm sure as hell not nostalgic for moments like that moment when everyone found out you'd been sleeping around. That moment when your inability to get certain things under control nearly cost you the entire race. And it fell on me to go out there and tell everyone what a good guy you were, what a good husband you were, how you were such a trustworthy fella. And everyone seemed to have something to say about how I reacted, about what feelings I had or didn't have, about how the feelings I was expressing weren't real feelings. It was as if the, the way I was feeling wasn't how other people thought I should feel or didn't seem to match their idea of how a real person should feel. And Oh my God, I remember I said to you, I, I pleaded with you, please don't put me through this again. Mm -hmm. And you promised me, and I believed you. And six years later, you did it again. And just before it was all going to come out and hit the news, I was sitting with our daughter in her room. It was Christmas and she was home for the first time since she'd left for college and so nice to see her because I had missed her so much. And then you walked in and you said you had something you needed to tell us and you told us what you told us. When you said it, I, I didn't really feel much of anything, but then I looked over at her and I see her crying. I remember I looked over at her and I thought, isn't that strange? I, I, I don't feel any of that. I, mean, I, I used to feel that, but not anymore because, you know, you, you get told enough times that your feelings aren't real. At a certain point, you stop feeling what you're feeling. And I looked at her, at our daughter, and she had all of that. And I, I actually felt kind of jealous of her. Do you remember what I said to her? I, I, and I said, I, good girl, good girl, you have yourself a good cry. You hold on to that. I said, you're crying now and maybe you don't like how you're feeling, but you hold on to that for as long as you can. And she ran out of the room. I had asked her to stay, but she'd already gone. And I just sat there staring at a wall. Then I remember you said that you wished that I would cry because if I cried, then that would mean I could still feel hurt. And if I could still feel hurt, then that would mean that I could still feel for you. And you, you asked me, do you feel for me? And I told you, I didn't know. Mm. And you told me that you were scared, scared that if I, I didn't feel for you, then I was going to divorce you. And I, I told you I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't divorce you. And you asked me if I was sure. And I said, yes. I said, I'm with you. I'm with you. Till the end, I am with you. And every day, I am so grateful for that. I'm, I'm not not a broken mess because I'm trying to play like I'm perfect. It's, it's just that those things that are supposed to make me cry just don't make me cry anymore. I just don't have it in me. This is what I've been through, Bill. I don't cry. I keep it together. No matter what, I keep it together. Mm. What? What are you thinking? No, just that. Say what you're thinking. If you were to just say all of that out there, out in public, 
you'd win. Hmm. I don't need your money. Mark and I will figure out something else. I, I'm not going to be your puppet. Mark stays where he is. And you stay where you are, which is not on the trail, not speaking for me, not telling me what to do. You can go now. It's late, Hillary. Yes, and? I have nowhere to go. There's nothing at home. It was a mistake to call you here. Don't say that. Don't say that, Hill. Can I at least sleep here tonight? I don't want that. It just might raise more questions if someone sees me here and sees me not staying with you. It, it, it might. All right. And do you think it would be a problem if I stuck around tomorrow, too, just while you're here in New Hampshire? That's all. I don't know. I... Don't ask me. Just do what you're going to do. I'm going to shower then. Are, are you gonna? No, I'm, I'm gonna stay up. Okay. The next day, the same hotel room. You happy? You're making it really hard to be. <laughs> Excuse me? You, you came out here. Because you called me. And you got yourself everything you wanted. Right down the line. And what is it that you think I wanted? Well, Mark's gone. I cried. And you got to go out there and be in the spotlight. All of which got you exactly what you wanted. So don't try to act, <laughs> act like uh Did you not think that I wasn't going to find out what was going on? That, that you'd gone out there and started stumping after I asked you not to? Sure, sure. But I also figured you'd win. And when you won, you don't... you'd wouldn't care because you'd understand that everything I did, I did just to get you that win. Little did I know that you were trying to lose. I don't think of it as losing. I think of it as a different path, a new start without you. Bullshit. You only took that offer because you didn't want to lose. You'd sooner tank your campaign yourself than lose because you've lost because- No. <laughs> you're not going to give me this one, are you? No. Go before he gets here. I want to speak with him myself, without you here, without you getting in the middle. So that I can't save you from making a terrible, irreversible mistake? Because I don't trust you. Because you did everything I asked you not to. You don't listen because you've never listened. Oh, sure, you listen to other people, but not to me you don't. No, I, I have to hear about how everybody going on, about how great it is to meet you, how you're so amazing and inspiring, always talking about how when they talk to you, they always feel so heard, so listened to, that you make them feel as though they're the only person in the world who matters to you in that moment. And that's great for them. But when do I get to experience that, Bill? Huh? When do I get this, this magnificent version of Bill that everyone else seems to get except for me? You know, I, I'd like to meet that Bill. I really would. I would very much like to spend some time with him and get the chance to feel the way all those other people get to feel. But no. <laughs> the Bill I get doesn't notice I'm here. Oh. The Bill I get tramples me time after time. The Bill I get is a pretty shitty Bill. You know what really pisses me off is the thought that you get the best version of me. Well, the version that everyone else gets is drained and used up and uh, stale and wooden. That, that's what you called me, your, your words, not mine. Well, did you ever think that you might have some part in me being so drained and stale and wooden? And you come here with your cute little sob story, your, your hangdog, woe is me, sad sack performance, trying to make me feel bad for you. How, oh no, the, the whatever it was looked at your stomach and said you were cursed. No, Bill, not you. I'm cursed. I'm the one with the curse, and you are the curse. You have no idea what a curse is. I hope you never experience a real curse. Because a curse, a real curse, is being someone who did something, did something wrong, and keeps apologizing for it. 
but the apology is never taken. For however many times I apologize, it's never enough. It's never enough. I forgave you years ago. No, 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 no. Something changed. Years ago, something changed. And it never changed back. Okay. All right. You, you want to help? I do. do you, then you go out there and tell everyone how much I helped you during those eight years. How much I've advised you from the very beginning. How pretty much anything that was any good about your presidency was because of me because of my ideas, because of my guidance, because of the, would you do that? Would you, would you actually? That's not a winning strategy, Hill. That's not going to. Oh, fuck yourself, Bill. And you refuse to give credit where credit is due. Oh, is that what this is all about? Please don't tell me that this is why you're running for the presidency, just to get some kind of credit you think you're owed? No, no, I'm not running to get credit. I want to do this because I think no, I know I'd be great at this job because for decades I've been sitting off to the side, waiting, watching, watching other people do what I know I can do better. Watching other people who don't know what they're doing get ahead of me, sitting here having all the better ideas first while other people stumble through and get it wrong again and again until they get it right, if mm. they ever get it right. Let's just take this down to the bone. What I really think is that you don't want me to win. No. You don't want to see me get this job and see me do a better job than when you had the job. You don't want to be eclipsed because you know, you know that given the chance, I will eclipse you. Mark's right. He's actually right. This, most people, this general public that you're so fond of, they can't actually name one thing that you did in office that wasn't that one thing. And if you ask them what they liked about you, what made you a good president, all that's left, all that's remembered is your personality. That's it. And if you ask me, that's pretty thin stuff. It's a pretty lousy thing to be remembered for. There is no way that I am trying to stop you from doing the things you've always wanted to do. I swear, I swear it to God, I swear, I just want what's best for you. What's best for me? Yes. I'll tell you what would be best for me, you know, because Mark polled, he conducted polls. We have numbers to tell us what is and isn't best for me. and. What's actually best for me is for me to divorce you. Yeah. <laughs> Divorcing you would be very good for me. Divorcing you would completely change the way people see me. People would think more of me if I ended it with you. They'd, they'd have more respect for me because it's really what everyone wishes I had done way back when. And so when they look at me, what they see is disappointment. And I did, I, I thought about it. I tried to imagine what it might be like to do something like that. And I didn't do it. Was I scared to do it? Oh, God, I don't know. Did I actually want to stay married to you? Did I think to myself, well, God, I, I've put so much time into this relationship. It would seem wrong to let that go. And I do have the memory of something, something that, feels very far from where we are now. Something that I miss and I think you do too. But I, I have to ask myself, what, what do I get from this versus how much does it take away? And I really don't want to stay in this marriage if the reason I'm staying in it is for you so that you don't feel bad. You know? Enough feelings. Feelings make people do the stupidest things. I, I want to stay in this marriage because I want to stay in it. Because I get more out of it than I lose. But Bill, every second that passes, I see myself losing more than I gain. And there he is. I don't know what to do. Nor do I. You want me to go? He's already here. You want to ask him to come back another time? No. All right. Well. Let's just get this over with. 
Hello, Barack. Later that day, Barack has made an offer to Hillary. What are you thinking? I, what are you thinking? All right. Here's what I think. I think you should divorce me. Now, if you stay married to me, you're tied to me and you're tied to all the mistakes I've made. But if you divorce me, you said it yourself, people will see you in a new light. They'll have a respect for you that they never had before. And I'll go my way and you can go yours and I'll do what I'll do and I'll make more mistakes. If I do, it won't matter. At least it won't matter as much as it would matter now. And what I do won't hurt you as much as it hurts you now. I think it's what would be best. I think it's the only way. Do you want that? Does it matter? I wish it didn't, but... No. No, I don't want that. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Why? Because. You're all I have. You are. You're all I have. But if I have you, You're left with nothing. I look at Bill. He looks at me. Neither one of us knows what to do. I turn on the TV for the first time in days, and there it is. <laughs> They're playing the clip of me at the luncheon, the, the luncheon with the women. And I watch the TV, and I see myself, and... I see myself doing what looks like crying. It really looks like I'm crying. But I don't remember it. But I also know it doesn't matter what I remember or what I think I did. All that matters is what it looks like. And it looks like I was crying. <laughs> so maybe that's what's true? I, I, I just don't know anymore. So I, I turn off the TV. We walk out onto the balcony. We look up at the night sky, we see stars. And the stars that I look at are the same stars that everyone has looked at. Everyone great and small, important and unimportant. I say to Bill, 100, 200, maybe even 300 years from now, your name will be a name that people will know like they know the stars above. But I'm down here and it's like I'm trying to stare at the back of my own head, trying to see something that I just can't see. But if I could catch a glimpse of it, then I would know what to do. It's all off. In, in some subtle but deadly way, it's, it's all off. And Bill tells me, I know how you feel. And I, I know that he does, but also, not really. And while I'm staring at the stars, I think about the universe and how if the universe is infinite, and some people say that it is, then that means there are an infinite number of planet Earths exactly like ours. And there are universes in which Bill is president. And there are universes in which I'm president. And there are universes in which I'm president and Bill is not. And there are universes in which neither of us is president and where everyone else is president except for us. <laughs> If the universe is infinite, all possibilities exist. 
I'm starting to realize. I'm starting to realize that I live in one of the universes where I don't win. And that is hard. It is hard to think that he got it and I can't. And I'm fighting to win. I'm fighting to win and I know I can win. But I can't win.